guys, Alex Peak Performance Reviews. Welcome to another vlog and welcome to another kind of update video more than anything. I'm obviously here with the Supra and I haven't given you an update that long ago, so to speak, but at the same time, I haven't been doing much on it. So I wanted to kind of keep you in the loop, I suppose, and let you know what's going on with this car. So obviously I've been having lots of time doing reviews and stuff like that and doing stuff on other cars. So I've kind of not neglected this car, but kind of, it's just so hard to get time on it. So I just want to kind of update you on some of the things that I need to do. There's actually quite a lot. Um, it hasn't been running overly great. If you've been following the videos, you'll notice and know that I had some fuel pressure issues that I'm trying to get to the bottom of. I still need to really get Remain um, and the guys at RaceCal to remote into this. So I'm probably going to do that midweek this week coming, um, hopefully. Um, I'm gonna, I've got a new uh, fuel pressure sensor, which we think it is. It needs to be then calibrated, and I need to go for a run. The problem is, in the UK right now, the weather is just horrendous. That doesn't look great. It's just all muddy and wet and just horrible. So it's really, really hard. So that's kind of taken a back burner because of that reason more than anything. You can't really take out a car that even on low boost is about 750 horsepower. Um, on the uk roads at this time of year it's like kind of near zero and it's not nice so anyway let me run through loads of the other stuff that i do want to do on this car and i need to do on this car so um yeah there's lots of good stuff coming and i suppose that this is a good way to let you know of exactly what i might say if you're not if you are new to the channel and you're seeing this this is 1,251 horsepower on high boost on K16 race fuel. Anyway, let's go and check out what we need to do. Excuse the um, lighting, it's probably not gonna be good and you may get a noisy picture and I do apologize. Um, so yeah, um, there's definitely lots of interior bits that I'd like to clean up and make nicer. So first thing, first I guess is the interior. We've also got a little Bluetooth module. module. Let me see if I've got it in here. I think it's in here. Um, there's a Cyvex Bluetooth module, which, um, look, I love Cyvex, but everything is so expensive, unfortunately. And it had a little connector. I don't know if it's not going to probably focus. And excuse the poor Supra, it's really dirty at the moment. Um, there's a little pin out there, and there's a, a part of a loom that doesn't connect to this very well. I think it's just a loose connecting connection. I'm going to try and make a nice different connector that then connects almost solders it to the loom because this is going to be permanent it doesn't need to come out um yeah so that's one thing that needs to what that does is just to let you know that basically is like a comms box or bluetooth um uh comms box to um the ipad that i run in here that gives me the live data which is really nice it's nice to have the live data and um, there is a minuscule delay over say a laptop when it's hardwired in which we've also got actually um you've probably seen me do some um uh not that one uh there is like a it's like a network cable anyway it's in there um that's just pulled up because i was just looking at the um ecu and stuff um and other than that we've also got some tidying up at the back again because i haven't been using this a lot and it's horrible time of the um, winter i feel like just inside here's got a little bit dirty and it was clean really clean at one point so i just want to clean every the all the interior give it a clean up um this um array of horrendous i mean this this battery is an agm battery it's a big battery it's been much better than the lightweight batteries i've been using but now it's in a real ghetto location it doesn't look very nice I really want to think about relocating it maybe um to just behind and um, the seats although obviously this is ideal because it's right over the back um uh the rear suspension and um wheels so it's good for traction for a rear wheel, rear wheel drive car obviously as you can see there's actually not a lot of weight in the rear um the good thing about a rear wheel drive car is obviously weight transfer when you accelerate the weight transfers to the rear so it's not a massive issue that's another thing that needs to get um into paint shop of d um uh, uh, it um, antennaed it so that just needs to be um, made flush and then um, basically a, a bit of paint um, over that and just lots of um, wire tidying um, I wouldn't mind making a, a case over this possibly looking at external um, swell pot as well it's not necessarily needed for how I use it I mean although I am talking about time attack which then would be useful. Um, I never tend to run the tank that low. And if I do, I just don't drive it hard. So um, so just some interior kind of cleaning, um, some loom tidying up or, or um, the non 
Cyvex or some loom tidying up and, and wiring. Uh, try and get rid of weight from wiring, wiring that's not used. I don't tend to use the speakers anymore, so I'm tempted to just take them out front and rear. And I just want to make this car go on a diet. Don't get me wrong, it's light as hell at the moment anyway, but um, any amount of um, extra interior that doesn't need to be in there can easily come out. I wouldn't be surprised if I can still get at least five, six, seven, maybe even 10K out of there. Um, and then I, the, the plan is to go to Snetterton, just get it on a Waybridge or a Waybridge somewhere else and just see what the weight is. I've always wondered what I've got this down to. Um, these J-Spec ones start life at about uh, 1490 kg, which is lighter than any super kind of effectively on the planet, the J-Spec ones. Um, and especially this iteration and RZ, um, but I would like to um, really get it on the way and scales and see what we've managed to get off of this. There's a lot of carbon fiber. I've done some little titanium bits here and there if you follow the channel for a while. So it's, um, it's very lightweight um, and I can make it even lighter. So onto some other bits. Um, obviously I've been having the issue with this fuel pressure issue, which is doing my head in. So hopefully once Remain and the guys at Race Cal remote in, and check um, all sensors, check everything, and um, recalibrate the fuel pressure sensor. I'm hoping my weird fueling, um, fuel pressure trip issue goes away. The car's just deteriorated and got worse and worse and worse. It kind of sounds like it's gonna be something like that, but it might not be, which is gonna be fun and games. But yeah, it definitely need those guys to remote in. I've also had some issues with make, get, uh, getting the Cyvex to communicate um, or, or sorry, log. I don't know why for some reason it just doesn't seem to log. Um, don't think it's my laptop. Maybe something going on with the Cyvex. I don't know. Or I may just be in an absolute dumb ass and been pressing the wrong shit. I don't know. But I've had a few people look at it and they've struggled a little bit as well and they seem to think it is doing uh, what I think it's doing and that's not logging, which is annoying because it means I can't send a log to my tuner. Um, but they can live look at data, which I think is the way we will have to go. But the problem is the next two weeks in the UK, the weather's going to be shite. So anyway, um, let's go on to some more things that are still to be done and put in, to be put on this car still. It's a lot. Still got some batch of um, some batches of uh, K16 race fuel, so ready for some racing. Uh, I've got the nice carbon fiber light. I'm not going to get it out, but obviously I've had that for a while and these little um, faux carbon... Um, uh, vent blockers which can give us a bit of speed as well um, and other than that this under here is a um, it feels actually weirdly kind of heavy despite it um, likely to be a lot um, lighter than what I've got um, this is a fiberglass and basically under here is the um, TRD 3000 um, uh, bonnet and um, it's going to basically have a cut out um, cut in it because I'm going to be doing a vent mounted exhaust system um, for a temp, um, like when I race and stuff like that. So um, really good to get rid of like a full exhaust system effectively, just going to be like a little stubby um, L1. I'll actually show you it in a minute. And that will come out of the, out of here, fire spitting out the top um, for when I want to really get the weight down when I'm racing um, half miles and stuff like that, quarter miles, whatever. Um, but it's a lot of work to then take a whole exhaust system off and put that stubby on to some extent. So I've got to contemplate how often I use it. I don't know. But anyway, that's one other job as well. The drag radial is feeling sorry for himself. These will be used um, probably only for quarter mile. I'm not sure whether they're... I have used them. I did use them um, on the half mile. And uh, I don't know whether I like the feel of them or not. I'm not sure. But yeah, they... Um, they are street ET, so they're um, kind of street legal as such. Um, and they're obviously on another set of uh, N keys, the same as what's basically uh, on the car. So, um, yeah, this is the stubby exhaust I was talking about. It's going to be on the back of the turbo, V-band clamped on. And it's got another um, Cyvex um, wideband o2 sensor on it as well so it's brand new sensor so literally i don't have to fiddle about with that basically having to come off from um the main um exhaust system so it's just easier just to swap it out that way still hard enough work but better and in here we have lots of suspension components which are quite exciting to get on actually we've got uh, a mixture of um uh, drift works parts 
um, and um, some really nice rose jointed ends. There's loads of awesome, awesome bits in here. Um, pillar ball, rose mounted, uh, proper high, really nice suspension components. More drop links. Just loads of really, really nice, nice bits. See, um, some lovely, lovely bits. I know you, I can't get them out. I can't be bothered, but they are nice, chunky race bits um, for the rear suspension. And then I'm going to get someone pretty fancy to um, tune the suspension and uh, dial it all in for me, ready for fast road and, yeah, a bit of time attack effectively. So um, that is pretty much about it. But the most important thing that I really, really, really need to get sorted is the um, running issue, really. It's starting to piss me off. Um, I haven't had much time to drive the car anyway, but pretty much every weekend I have time to drive it. I drive it, so I do miss it. And... Yeah, I want to get back out on it. So better get that issue sorted ASAP. Um, but yeah, uh, like I say, it's just a little update, guys. I know it's nothing uh, major, but I just thought I'd give you uh, a quick update. While, you know, during the winter months, I'm relatively quiet and with videos in general, to be honest. So I just thought I'd give you a, a little update. Um, yeah, uh, like I say, winter months are really, really quiet ish for us because we just don't get loads and loads of car content or car cars to review from press teams because um say so the channel's still small it's growing really really well now but yeah we just need to get more cars um but in the in between obviously i'm always fucking around with cars so i always love to bring you whatever the hell i'm doing really so um yeah that's an, an update of that um let, let's open the bonnet and show you the bonnet because it's always lovely under there voila beautiful um but yeah there's nothing really too much to do there obviously as always there's always like little bits that i'm sure i can tidy up um but other than that it's it's great so yeah it's looking good uh, probably do a um full oil change um soon um it's been probably two and a half um two thousand miles of running uh, and more duration than anything so which is nothing because obviously it runs on a easter race oil triple easter race oil so really high quality race oil um, but nonetheless, it doesn't look like it's barely, you know, got any wear in it, which is great. But at the end of the day, um, that motor is worth a lot of money now because it's fully forged and absolute ground nut and bolt done. Um, so I want to keep it running uh, as healthy as possible. Obviously, just need to sort the um, fuel pressure issue, whatever, whatever that may be. But yeah, I'm excited to kind of get back on it. Um, excited for the year ahead. Um, whether it be racing in this or just doing some awesome car reviews for you guys. Um, got lots planned, lots coming up. Uh, just need the weather to be better here in the UK. But um, I'm not sure where you're watching from, guys. Um, hit us up in the comments where you're watching from and whether you found us through the Supra or other bits. Because um, it's really nice having your support and I love you guys being around. So thank you, always. Um, but yeah, um, that pretty much is about it. Let's look at this and appreciate this a bit more. She's beautiful. I actually have got some plans. Um, I've always said this actually later in the year. I am planning on running, uh, and I, what I, I was contemplating, I'm going to definitely have a year with this setup. It's awesome, and I love it. This is going to be the setup this year. And it's not like I've had and lived with this setup for long. Like I say, 1,251 horsepower is nothing to you know um, sniff at. This is a monster of a car with this power. But the motor is built for... Easy 1,700 to 2,000 horsepower. Easy, easy, easy. As long as things don't go wrong and I'm not doing stupid things, it's built for that. So I have decided to go for a bigger turbo. Going for something in the realms of about 1,400 wheel horsepower. So 1,600, 1,700 horsepower flywheel. Um, so that will, rather than this tickling that motor a little tiny bit, it's going to push it to a nice limit, but still a really safe limit. And the turbo I'm going to go for is going to still be relatively usable and about as usable as it can get for a road turbo on uh, the road on low boost. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to talk to you about that later in the year. It's not going to be till way later in the year. Haven't bought anything yet, but 
I'm definitely going to, I've decided. So, so yeah, not that that, you know, wheel horsepower or thousand wheel horsepower that's roughly got isn't enough. Got to be done in it. Yeah, I've kind of contemplated it quite a bit and, and I've thought about it a bit more. I don't want to go silly. I don't want to go, I don't want to have such a huge turbo that I can't use it at all on the road. Um, I understand obviously with a lot more power, the lowest boost setting is probably going to be like at the moment it's 750 flywheel and the lowest boost setting um, maybe going forward, maybe like 850, um, 850. It will be possibly a little bit of a handful on the road on the lowest setting, um, but I'm going to try and do all those amazing suspension things to it to make it um, decent enough. Um, we'll we'll, we'll br cross that bridge when we come to it, as they say, but I'm definitely going to go for it. I'm going to go for a uh, a 1400 wheel horsepower turbo, so 16, 1650, 1700 horsepower kind of um, set up um, rather than tickling the motor like this one has, I'm not even tickling it. Um, the other one's going to push it a little bit more, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem genuinely for this kind of built motor. So um, I'm, I'm just going to go for it. I think it'd be silly not to. So uh, it's all fun and games, isn't it, in this world, you know? But let's get this running right first and let's enjoy this year. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm planning to do some court mile stuff, some track stuff as well, and, and just some fun, uh, fun and games in it, and enjoying it really more than anything. Um, I've got other cars that I enjoy in um, in other respects. I've got the RS3, which is an awesomely capable all-round car, um, and that is going to be um, going stage two very, very soon. Looking for just over 500 horsepower. It's weird. It sounds like nothing when you compare it to this, um, but it's going to really be exciting because I use it a lot more, like almost daily. Um, so it'd be nice to have a car with a lot of power. Um, that car will go from, you know, being uh, low, super low tens in the um, 100 to 200 to um, super car like six second kind of region. So it's uh, or late, probably late sixes if I'm honest, like, you know, push or shove. Um, but that, that is still somewhere in the realms of some, you know, decent supercars. So it's going to be a really quick little all around package car that's like a supercar. So I'm really excited about it. But anyway, um, I'm waffling on a bit too much. And I've, this video that was going to be short has become a bit longer. Anyway, I always like that. Um, if you've got any questions, as always, hit us up in the comment section. Ask us anything, whether it's about this or another car or the RS3 or running sometimes that I do. I don't know, whatever. Just hit us up. I like answering your questions. And I love the interactivity and speaking to you guys. That's it. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye for now.